count on one thing The same God that never failed Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God is never late Is working all things out Working all things out Oh yes, I will lift you high In the lowest valley Yes, I will bless your name Yes, I will sing for joy When my heart is heavy
Do whatever you want to Do whatever you want to 
Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay it down Every lie and every crown This is my surrender
Welcome everybody to the online service of New Community Church. So glad you're with us again today for this new year, 2021. If you can believe that, happy new year. Hope it is a blessed one for you. Uh, We're starting a new series today, but before we do, I do want to tell you some awesome news. I'm so excited to announce to you the totals of our Giving It All Away offering for 2021. This is an offering, if you don't know, that we take every year at Christmas Eve, as sort of a gift back to God, uh, really a token of our love for His greatest gift to us, the giving of His Son, Jesus, but also fuels our vision to become a compelling presence for Christ. It, 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 uh, it essentially pays for all of the th- all of the outreach that we have, uh, our five sixteens as we call them, the the global outreach to Cuba and uh, trying to 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 really help the least of these, especially this year with our theme of vulnerable children. So, so excited! Uh, I I said it would probably be a minor miracle if we hit last year's goal because last year we blew the roof off our. Our, our previous goal, and we gave just over $27,000, which I thought was fantastic for our, our humble-sized church. Uh, but this year, are you ready for it? Here's the number, $33,546.33. That is an amazing amount. I, I, I just want to give public praise to God for His uh, awesome provision of love for us. Uh, the best is yet to come for our outreach for 516s, for our vision. This is going to be a great year, and uh, we really want to bless people in our community, uh, the pastors in Cuba that we want to support, uh, and the other, uh, all the other things we said we want to do with this money, plus more. And we can do that now. Uh, 100% of this offering goes toward those things, thanks to your generosity. So thank you for giving, church, and, and you really did uh, an amazing job. And I wish I could talk about this more, but we have a sermon to give. So I'd like to pray right now and give uh, thanks to the Lord for that. Lord in heaven, thank you so much for your provision. I, I'm just, I'm still amazed at, at this amount. I, I just can't believe it. And yet we have to believe it because uh, you are so, uh, you are so good that you would uh, uh, just bless us in a way that we can bless others. And so we pray that we would do just that. And Lord, this would be our best year yet as a church. You would, you would really be glorified uh, through us, that we would shine for you, and and all of the good deeds we do would be to give you glory, Father, uh, just as you say that we should do. Bless this message now. Uh, speak through me by your Holy Spirit. Uh, bless each person listening online, whether it be uh, on the premiere on Sunday or whether it be on demand later in the week, that your Spirit would be at work. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> I I want to begin this uh, series called Strapped by um, putting these um, cuffs on because l- I want them to represent, in a way, the bondage that many people, especially in our great country of America, have to our finances. We have a relationship with our finances that is either healthy or unhealthy. And I believe that the vast majority of American people, good people, have an unhealthy relationship with our finances. And that's proven with stats. Uh, It's proven by our debt. It's proven by our lifestyles. And that's just not that way in many other countries. This this is an American problem. And we do not have a great relationship with money. And the Bible has, as you could imagine, a ton of things to say about that relationship. Jesus talks about money more than any other topic. Of the Proverbs, where I want to camp out today, talks about money a whole lot. Not surprisingly, because this is God's book of wisdom, and He wants us to He wants us to do well with our our wealth. He, but He wants us to use it for His purposes. And today, I want to talk about four of the big ways we get ourselves in bondage. I, I'm completely stuck here. I can't get out, and I, I'm in big trouble. In case you're wondering, these are real certified police handcuffs. Uh, thank you, Luke, for lending them to me for this sermon. Uh, and when we have the bondage of a, a bad relationship with money and our finances, that bondage, I think, firstly, we don't know it's there. We often just live that way. We don't know any other way. But as you'll see in the sermon, when that bondage is here, it makes everything difficult. We can still sort of go on with our life, limping along, just as I can go on with the sermon. But uh, everything's going to be constricted. I won't be able to do my hand gestures the same way. I won't be able to turn my pages over here the same way. 
And so I want that just to be a visual today to think about because you may be in at least slight financial bondage without really realizing it. So without further ado, let's jump right in. The top four ways I think that we get into money bondage according to the book of Proverbs, God's word. Um, The first of these, of course, is the big one, greed. Perhaps the most uh, insidious uh, evil, really, of the, the money bondage. There's something greedy within our hearts. This is probably true of most people, but by the Holy Spirit, we can rise above it. In the book of Proverbs, it says it this way, chapter 1, verse 19, Such is the fate of all who are greedy for money. It robs them of life. Really can't be more explicit than that. Greedy is bad. Greedy is a heart that is apart from Christ, and greedy is a mindset that puts money at a high premium, too high, just wants it at any cost, but it will rob you of your very life. And I think that's the part we don't see until it's too late. So we're, we're, we're walking around with these uh, handcuffs of greed, and, and we're, we have this mask of greed, and it, and it filters our Christianity, it filters our decision-making, and pretty soon it starts to strip us of life itself. And we don't even realize it's happening. That's why Jesus himself asked this question, what will a man give in exchange for his very soul? And one of the things Jesus meant is greed. Our our greediness, we will follow to the point where we give up of our lives and we give up of our souls. Listen to 1 Timothy 6.10. This is from the message translation or paraphrase of the Bible. It says this, lust for money brings trouble and nothing but trouble. Going down that path, which is greed, lust for money, some lose their footing in the faith. So if you go down the road of greed, lust for money, it's a road that actually becomes slippery. It's a journey. It's a path that you begin to lose your faith. And it may not feel that bad. I'm just chasing after uh, the future or my security or my retirement and things like that. But what you don't realize is you're going to give up your very faith, it says, uh, completely and live to regret it bitterly ever after. And there's so much truth here that many can 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 attest to. You you might know it from your past to say that this is a road that leads to death. It's it's one that leads in, in bitterness and, and it leads in, in in wishing I had done life differently, regrets, rather than starting 2021, a new slate, a new day, a new resolution to say, I'm going to have a different relationship with money. I'm going to do away with greed. It's not to say money is wrong or God couldn't bless with you with money. I hope he does, but it won't be as a result of the pursuit of money at any cost. Um, th- this reminds me of a story I heard many years ago about the African ring-tailed monkey. It's a beautiful monkey, as you can see here. And uh, th- this monkey, so the story says, was at one time uh, a, a species that uh, was very valuable and people would try to catch them. But supposedly they're extremely hard and difficult to catch. Um, people could would try, and they ne- never could get these crafty monkeys. It's until the Zulu people figured out a way that actually became very easy to catch them. And according to the story I heard, at least, um, the way to do it was to carve out a, a very large melon, put a hole in the center at a certain s- size, and in, this, in the middle of the melon, they would put these monkeys' favorite seeds that they like to eat. And so when the monkeys realized that these seeds were in the melon, they would put their little monkey hand inside the hole and they would reach in, grab the seeds. Of course, once they made the fist, they'd be unable, just as I am, to pull their fist outside of that melon because they would not let go of the seeds at any cost. Now, I don't know whether that's a true story or not, but I could understand how that could happen. Because my own heart does that. And yours does too, if you're honest. Uh, My own heart can be greedy. It it can want something so badly at times. It it may be something physical, financial. It may not be physical or financial. It may just be something you desire. Um, A a relationship or a future or a job or purpose. And you want it so bad that you put it before Christ. And what happens is you are unwilling to let go. Now, of course, the monkey has a giant melon on his hand. He's flopping around. Very easy to catch. He becomes in bondage. And that's what happens to you and me as well. Number two, a a quick way into financial bondage is the allure of easy money. 
easy money. Now, no time in our history of the world has it been easier to make money than now. Um, that's good and it's bad. It's not wrong to make money, obviously, but it's wrong to pursue it with greed. And, and the allure of easy money is just that. It's an allure that's that's often too hard to obtain. Uh, it just seems too good to be true, and it is. And it leaves us in bondage, just chasing that easy money. Now, our society is unique this way. Again, if you go to a developing country, there's almost no way to make easy money. But unfortunately, people live in poverty, which is also not good. But our problem isn't as much poverty, although there's definitely that in our state's but it's, it's, it's chasing after easy money, which leaves us, in a sense, in a state of poverty. When uh, the staff and I were out doing the Christmas shopping for the last 516, we had such a blast. We were going through Walmart and picking out presents for the little boys and girls. Man, I just love that project. It's so good. Um, and I kept seeing this boy's face on the toys. And I didn't know who he was because my kids are older now. They, they're not into this. But Dustin's told me, he's like, you know, that that's Ryan's world. This, this, this kid, Ryan KG, I believe his name is. And I was like, who is that? Well, he's a YouTuber and he's only eight years old and he sells products on YouTube. And well, not only that, but I, I looked into him. And as you probably know, he is the richest YouTuber. He makes more money on YouTube than anybody else. He made over $26 million last year just from his YouTube videos, which I laugh because it just doesn't seem possible. And many more millions, hundreds of millions on his endorsements by put it, putting his face on boxes in Walmart. Unbelievable, easy money. And of course his parents who own all of his money are laughing their way all the way to the bank. Ryan, you know, just, just by having a cute little boy face and making little videos. Now that phenomenon which, again, is sort of new and is sort of American. It's sort of here uh, of being a YouTuber. Well, we see that and say, well, I could make $26 million too, except we couldn't. Many have tried. 85% of YouTubers uh, make less than $10 a video, many far less. And they spend hours and hours and hours on that video. So they're not, they're not even making minimum wage. And so they become trapped trying to find the allure of easy money but they never obtain it. In fact, they end up broke themselves trying to buy all the equipment and doing this, uh, whether that be online gambling, whether it be the, all the fantasy leagues that we get involved with and all the money that goes out could be um, buying lottery tickets and the allure of easy money sucks us in and pretty soon we're in bondage because we're, we're always trying to make the quick buck. And the Bible speaks to this. Uh, Proverbs 13 verse 11 says, Wealth from quick, from get rich quick schemes. It's hard to say that. Get rich quick schemes quickly disappears. And it's so true. Wealth from hard work grows over time. Now that quick money, it, it, in a sense, puts you in a bondage because you're always chasing, chasing, chasing. And most people never achieve it. And the few that do will find that <clears throat> that it disappears really quickly. Even very rich athletes or celebrities, their, their money goes really fast. They buy these homes, they become bankrupt before they know it because this quick money just disappears. Now, the biblical teaching is to work hard and save bit by bit. Now, I know that is such a difficult thing to hear for many people, but that's the ancient wisdom of God. And that's what the Bible teaches. Um, I could give you proverb after proverb that teaches that. Proverbs 10, 4 says, lazy people are soon poor, hard workers get rich. Pretty, pretty basic. Uh, Proverbs 6, 10, and 11 says, a little extra sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. In other words, hard work and saving bit by bit is the way to build a good financial future. And uh, it's not by easy money. The allure of easy money is, 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 will put you in bondage. Um, it's the same as the word Nintendo. I, I had read that the word Nintendo means heaven blesses hard work. That's what Nintendo literally means in a Japanese translation, which is kind of ironic because every time I play video games, it's to get out of doing hard work. But apparently that's what Nintendo, the company, was built on. Heaven blesses hard work. And that's actually essentially what the Proverbs teaches. God blesses hard work. Um, so don't look for the easy money. Number three, a third way to get into financial bondage, a big one is to getting into debt. And I think everybody knows this, 
but it is the American way. We, we spend money that we don't have. That's essentially what the definition of debt is. We spend money that we don't have. Now, there may be unique times in life when that's okay. It's a little risky, but you're doing it in a uh, calculated, a balance, and a wise approach. Perhaps the only way you could get through school was to take out a safe uh, and limited uh, f school loan and, and, and to pay it back. I, I'm not saying it's always wrong to borrow. Of course, it's sometimes you have to borrow for a mortgage. But unfortunately, we're living in a time where we borrow for everything. And the debt today, the ratio of healthy and unhealthy debt is very, very bad. And as a result, the latest stats are, are, are not good. Um, the average American has a personal debt. Every American has a personal debt of $90,000. I mean, that is so much money. That's just the average. And there are many people, of course, that don't have debt. That means there's many that have much more debt. And $90,000 as an average, that, that's, that's enough to knock the wind out of you financially. That will put you in, in handcuffs. A $90,000 individual debt, that means that it could be more in a family household, is almost too much to get out of. Um, and it's going to make you um, suffer. And you may not even realize you're in handcuffs. Think about it. If you owe a tremendous mortgage payment and you owe big car payments and you have, you know, several thousand dollars, like most people do, of credit card debt and you're paying big time interest on that. And now you're in a job and the job, let's say you don't really like the job, but you're not going to get out of the job because you can't. You are now stuck. You cannot quit that job because you have to make the money to pay for all of these things that you desired so much that you bought them with money that you didn't yet have. And that's where we get into real serious problem, become handcuffed. We, we trap ourselves in a life that we didn't want. Uh, Proverbs 22, 7, really important verse. It says, the rich rule over the poor. That's true. And not in a good way. And the borrower is slave to the lender. God doesn't mince any words in the book of Proverbs about debt. When you take on this kind of debt, again, there, there, there is such a thing as, as some healthy debt, I think. Uh, be careful about that. But I'm talking about unhealthy debt and astronomical debt that, that many Americans find themselves. When you have that kind of debt level, you become a slave. You become in bondage to somebody else. And the person you're enslaved to, it's not a good person. This is a person that is taking advantage of you, uh, the credit card companies or the, the mortgage lenders or whoever it is. And I, I think today is the day to say, you know what? Yeah, it's true. I have way too much debt. Maybe you don't have 90000 but it's too much. You have credit card debt. If you have any credit card debt, get rid of it and make 2021 the year. And I'm going to talk more about uh, debt in a future sermon because I think it's that important. Uh, make this the year that you, you say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to get rid of this so I can start being free in my finances. God wants you to be free in every aspect of your life. He does not want you to be in bondage at all. I remember one time my uh, credit card number was stolen years ago, and I got a phone call from my bank, and they said, uh, have you been in Hong Kong in the last half an hour? They literally asked me that. Have you been in Hong Kong in the last half an hour? So I looked at my calendar and I, uh, I, I, I don't think so, not in the last half an hour. Actually, I've never been there before in my life. And they proceeded to tell me that someone had stolen my credit card number and had spent, get this, $3.18. I was very relieved to find out. I, I was devastated that they stole my card, but I was very relieved when they told me it was $3.18. I, I didn't even know what you could buy in Hong Kong for $3.18. Like maybe a really nice hearty bowl of miso soup and compliments of me. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed it. But they immediately shut my car down for over a week. And so, you know, if you've had that happen, you know, you got to live without your, and now we don't use credit cards, my wife and I, but we do use our debit feature just because it's easier than carrying our cash. We try to spend with money we actually have, which I, what I, I would encourage. But having this spend with no debit card for that week, it reminded me that uh, how, how difficult it is. You know, we'd go to the gas pump and you'd have to go in the store and pay your 20 bucks or 40 bucks to, to put gas in your tank. And then you'd realize, boy, I didn't give them enough cash. And I, and I wondered, what if we had to spend cash on everything we bought in life? 
in a way we'd be better off because you'd only spend money that you actually had earned. And that's a good way of thinking about your finances to only, for the most part, spend money that you've actually earned. And finally, number four, a fourth way to become in bondage is the opposite of debt. It's the opposite of debt. It's to be miserly or to keep it all to yourself. So you can become in bondage by spending too much money, money that you don't have, and becoming in debt to somebody else, a slave to the lender. And the Bible teaches you could also be in bondage, probably more of a spiritual bondage, by by the opposite. You you could, and this isn't just greed, this is more like being stingy and miserly. So I can hoard my money. I can put it all into investments and not do what God says, and which is to give generously to the poor. Um, and, and many of you did that with giving it all away offering. Praise God and thank you, church. Uh, or to uh, consider tithing, which we'll talk about in a future week as well. Or to consider the needs of other people around me. Proverbs 11.24 says it this way, Give freely and become more wealthy. That's the way it works every time. Give freely and you actually become more wealthy. And make no mistake about it, it's talking about physical financial wealth. Be stingy and lose everything. That's also true. They say, well, how does that work? Well, I've seen it work out this way. The stingy, miserly person just puts it away, puts it away, puts it away. Think about it. They never spend anything on themselves. So that money has no human worth. It has no value. The only value was them just excited about seeing a number grow. And then they die. And they actually lose everything, just the way the proverb says. And somebody else spends their hard-earned money. Now, maybe that's what they intended. That's not necessarily wrong. But you can see where there's great joy and great freedom by giving a portion of that money, not all of it usually, but a percentage, a portion to God's purposes. What a joy on earth that is. You know, it's more blessed to give than to receive, as we just saw in our Christmas offering. I'm still over the moon about it. And that's the way it worked. Can I tell you a terrible pastor joke? I, I, I may have said this joke before. I apologize. Because I'm on video, I can't wait to hear if you give me permission or not. I'm just going to tell it anyways. But it's a terrible pastor joke. It's not funny, unless you're a pastor, and then it's funny. But it's the joke about the $100 bill and the $1 bill. Have you heard it? The $100 bill is obviously bragging because he's a $100 bill, and he's, he's telling the $1 bill of all of his accolades. He said, I've been all around the world. I've been to Hong Kong. I, I, I've been to New York City. I've been to Paris. I, I just live in the life. $100 bill. They throw me down on the roulette, roulette wheel. You know, I get put on big meals and, and fancy tips and, and everything else. What have you been up to, $1 Bill? $1 Bill just looked humbly down at his feet, says, you know, same old, same old. Church, church, church. That's it. That's all for me. I told you. It was a terrible pastor joke. But there's a little bit of truth to it. The big spender, <laughs> he gets all this money on all these fun things. The $1 bill, adjusted for inflation, is probably the $20 bill today. It, it goes in the church offering basket, you know? Uh, and that's it. Because we're afraid to give big to God's big purposes. And as we've just seen in our, 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 our Christmas Eve offering, um, when we give big, we get more in return than we could ever ask for. And, and, and the purposes of God prevail. And not because, really, not because of the money. God doesn't need our money. It's because of the obedient heart. It's because of the freedom of giving. It's because obeying Jesus' word and, and taking God at, at face value from the scripture, so important. And, and we become the benefactors of that. I've learned that the hard way through my own life. Uh, I remember when we went through our adoption process. And I've said this before. One of my uh, sticky points to adopt when God called us to adopt was, was having a miserly heart. Um, we did, th we didn't have enough money and I, I wanted to do it, but I was afraid because I, I pushed back to God said, we don't have enough money. Our house isn't big enough. Uh, what about our future? You know, children, we all know cost a tremendous amount and I have three children. How, how do we make this work? And God sort of spoke to me through that process and reminded me that, 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 that he's got this. And um, it came in the form of a question. It's like, how, how much money would be too much to do what God asked me to do? And I would ask you the same question. What, what amount is too much to do what God has asked you to do today? 
with your finances, whatever that is for 2021. Because make no mistake about it, he wants to test your heart with your finances. And that leads me to the final outcome of this, which is all of these things have one thing in common. And the way out of bondage is quite simple. And, and it begins with this truth, that money is a heart issue. It always was and it always will be. Money is a way of God testing our heart. Because Jesus said it very, very clearly in Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. He's telling us that your treasure, i.e. your money, is going to show where your heart really is. Where your money is, that's where your heart is. So how you use your money will be a reflection of your heart. And you may ask this question, so you may say, well, how do I know? If my heart's in the right place with my money, it's very difficult to know sometimes. I'll admit that. But let me ask you a very, very difficult question. And don't answer out loud unless you're alone, then you can. But if I were to give you $1,000 for every person that you led to Christ, that is to say that you shared your testimony, you shared your faith, and they came to Christ. And every time you did that, I'm going to give you $1,000 cash right on the spot. If that were true, would you spend more time sharing your faith than you do now? Or asked another way, if I were to give you $100 for every person that you invite to church, whether it be online church like this or whether it be in person, $100, that's it. Every time you brought someone into church or invited them to church, even if they didn't come, I'd give you 100 bucks. If I made you that offer and you knew I could do it, I can't do it, but you knew I could do it, would you start inviting more people to church? Or if I said, I'll give you $100 every time you volunteer in kids community or one of our church uh, uh, activities on Sunday. So, so many needs right now with COVID going on. And if I said that, would you all of a sudden start volunteering at church more often? I'm not saying anything with judgment because our hearts, most of us would say, yeah, of course I would. I, I think that's the human condition. That's the greed condition. But that's a way to test your heart because it may be, it may be that you value money more than eternal outcomes like people coming to Christ and people coming into God's church and doing the activity in the ministries of the Lord. Those are so much more important than money. They have no money value. Whether we get paid for them or un we're not paid for them is irrelevant. We do them because God asks us to do them and because they have eternal rewards. So it may be that if you answered yes to those things, that money has become too high of a premium. This is a heart issue church. So let's lay it before the Lord. Don't beat yourself up on, about it. That doesn't help. If you've gotten yourself into debt, don't just just say, woe is me. That doesn't help. Have a positive attitude. God can do anything, no matter how big your debt is, no matter how handcuffed you are. God can do anything, and he will help you through this because you will trust in him. So let's set our money at, at, uh, on the altar of God this morning. All of it belongs to him. We'll talk about that more next week. And let's say 2021 is the year we do money differently, and we become unchained and we find that by f figuring out that that really it's a hard issue that that one truth will essentially uncuff us that will be the key that takes these handcuffs off let's pray together dear jesus i, I don't thank you for the money you've given me and you've always provided all of my needs and every time i give more than i think i can give you always give me more back in return. I, I've been abundantly blessed. And your word is true that we can't get out, give God. It's impossible. Every time we try, like in this offering, you give us so much more in return. It's incredible, Lord, the way you work. And that is truly freeing. So let all of the people listening in today take the handcuffs off by your Holy Spirit's power. Take the handcuffs off of, of debt, of greed, of trying to find easy money. Uh, of all the ways that we go about it that are wrong, that are sinful, that, that are apart from you. And let us instead be generous and, and wise with our money and get out of debt and, and to, to live fruitful lives uh, and, and to keep first the kingdom values of Christ. And, and we trust in you to help us with this and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Hey, thanks for tuning in, church. Uh, be safe. Uh, I hope that in time, when you're ready, we'll see you again back at church. Uh, rare to go. Unless you're watching out of town, then keep watching in. Uh, and we're so thankful for you as well. And again, thank you for your giving. Uh, it's it's really, really helped us to, to be able to do something really amazing and to shine and give all glory to God. Hope you have a great day, a great week, a happy new year. And tune in next week as we go part two to this new series called Strapped. We'll see you there.